Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I will be providing my ranking of my top five worst Star Trek novels that I've read. Uh, I've been getting back into talking about Star Trek novels, specifically doing rankings, because it's uh, I've read a lot of Star Trek novels since I made my first couple of Star Trek videos for this channel um, back in early tw or back in late 2021. And so I, I am much more well read in the genre. And also I have a much larger audience now than I did then. It's almost over 10 times as large. So I want to do more rankings to try to get more discussion and try to bring more people into reading Star Trek. And I've done a video talking about my top favorite series from Star Trek. I've also done a video ta talking about my uh, favorite individual standalone novels. I think I had like a list of 10 standalone novels that were superb and or that were like the best that I've read. And I've read something over 100 novels for Star Trek. I haven't done an exact count recently, but it's over 100 novels of Star Trek that I've read. And I actually generally have a great time with Star Trek. I think that they have a really good batting average. But there are always the worst books. And I'm someone that I always bristle at the idea of doing worst of lists. Um, I always bristle at that because I don't want to be defined by what I hate in Star Trek and, or in any fandom. And I don't want to be someone who just constantly bashes. Because, in fact, with many of the books present, I've actually read... Uh, books by those authors that I absolutely loved. Um, so I don't I don't hate the authors. I just think that these are some of the weaker Star Trek books that I've read. So this is my ranking of my top five weakest Star Trek books I've read. Of course, I've only read a hundred, and you might think that sounds like a lot. It really isn't because there's over eight hundred Star Trek novels. So this is nowhere near scratching the surface, and I believe I have done a good job cherry picking the types of Star Trek stories I wanted to read because I figured these are the types of stories I'm not going to enjoy. And so I've avoided those generally. Uh, but of course, there are always duds that you get to. So let's, why don't we go ahead and talk about them? My number five uh, weakest or worst Star Trek book that I've read is a Voyager novel called Marooned by Christy Golden. And my copy is falling apart because it was falling apart when I got it. And I feel bad giving Christy this, uh, this putting her on this list because I quite like Christy Golden. She wrote some amazing Star Wars books, and she's also written some amazing Star Trek books, specifically some Voyager novels. Her novel Seven of Nine was very entertaining. Her trilogy, Dark Matter trilogy, I think is very entertaining. Uh, and her best books in Star Trek by far is her Homecoming duology, Homecoming and the Farther Shore. So she's written some amazing books before and some just really pure entertaining books. And I thought that The Murdered Son was fine. It wasn't a great book, but it wasn't bad. And this book, Marooned, is sadly a not good book. Why is it not good? Because I like remember like nothing about the book. I remember the cover and, and the, the, the background of why the cover looks the way it does. But honestly, it's one of the most forgettable Star Trek books. It never stuck with me. Um, I remember the experience of it, but I don't remember details of plot or, or, or details of um, character growth because there really isn't that much character growth. This is, as you can tell, it's one of the numbered books for Star Trek uh, Voyager. This is when they couldn't really do anything major in the series. So they basically just said, all right, just write a novel where nothing really happens and just keep the universe, just keep everything the same at the end. So there's not much that changes in this book. And so it's just forgettable and which is really sad. And that's why I really have not read many of the numbered Star Trek books because I'm so afraid of disliking them because of how nothing really happens. So that's that one, my number five. My number four, it's technically two books, but really they're like one big book if you put them together, and so that's why I'm including them. And that's a Star Trek A Time uh, to Sow and A Time to Harvest, which, by the way, I bought all these online, and I got A Time to Sow, and I was like, this is a wonderful copy. I love it. Then I got A Time to Harvest, and I was like, this is a horrible copy. There's literally holes everywhere and parts peeling off the book, and it goes the the, the spine is just horrible and the back is horrible. So I apologize for that. These two books by Dayton Ward and Kevin Dilmore are part of the T Star Trek A Time 2 series. Now the Star Trek A Time 2 series, I've reviewed uh, 
all of the books uh, in my kind of wrap up that I did of the whole series. I did a time two discussion, um, but to put it succinctly, I thought the first couple of books by uh, who was the author by John Vornholt were okay. They were fine. And then I did not like these books at all. And then I read A Time to Hate and A Time to uh, Love, which were fine. And then I laid the last three books, uh, two of them by David Mack and one of them by Keith R.A. DeCanado. You have A Time for War, a time, f- uh, a time for War and A Time for Peace by DeCanado. And then you have A Time to Kill and A Time to Heal by David Mack. Those were phenomenal Star Trek books. Like some of the best Star Trek books I've ever read are from the end of the A Time 2 series. So the A Time 2 series has some amazing highs and it has some okay moments. And sadly, this is the lowest part. And if you've been following my channel and my Star Trek reviews, you know Kevin and... Oh, sorry, not Kevin Emerson. Uh, Dayton Ward and Kevin Dilmore have written a lot of mediocre books, in my opinion, but they've also written some good books. I thought that um, Purgatory's Key, the third book in that trilogy, the Legacies trilogy, was pretty entertaining. I thought that Dayton Ward's uh, not first novel in the Coda trilogy was amazing. I thought that his whole, uh, uh, his, his book, uh, from history's shadow is one of the best examples of media tie in fiction out there. And I also thought that Dayton Ward's book in the, uh, what, what series was that in the Typhon pack series was the best book in the Typhon pack series. So Dayton Ward can write good stories, but sadly this one is just not one of them. The problem with this book is it's just not entertaining. I remember the plot and I remember how it's advancing the story. And there's a reason why they put Jordy on this cover and why they put Dr. Crusher, uh, Dr. Beverly Crusher on this book. And each book basically has one main character that it's following, but it has a bunch of other side characters, or all the rest of the crew is involved and stuff. And the problem is, it's just not fun. This, this book has a tie-in to the Enterprise TV show, which is a really fascinating tie-in. And that alone was like a good hook that made me think, ooh, this is going to be interesting. And unfortunately, it just wasn't fun. It just felt like a slog. It felt like I was reading these to try to understand where the characters are going, but not having fun with the characters. I thought that the, the action was bland. I thought the plot was overall bland, except for the beginning hook. So overall wasn't the biggest fan of these books, which I really view as like one book together. So that's my number four. Next, I'll talk about the book, The Klingon Gambit by Robert E. Vardaman, which actually, I'll be honest, has a pretty cool cover. I actually kind of, kind of like this cover. It looks very, uh, very 60s, even though it came out in, I think, 80. Um, and this is one of the first Star Trek novels in the pocketbooks line when pocketbooks took over. You know, the first one is the, um, the motion picture uh, adaptation, which I'm actually going to be reading this month. Uh, and then also the second book is the entropy effect by, uh, Vonda McIntyre. And this is book number three. Uh, and so it's the third numbered book and it's really short. It's like 150 pages, although it has really small print. So if you make the print, the size of the print in these books, it's probably like a 200 to 220 pages. Um, this book, there's so many problems with it. One, one of the problems and I'm not normally a person that talks about this type of thing in when I'm reading books or reviewing books, but there's actually a disturbing amount of misogyny in this book. Um, Also, the setup of why they're looking in this planet for this thing is like, why do you think it's specifically on this planet? Like what, like this, this, this professor basically believes that this thing exists. I won't get too much into it, but he believes this thing exists. He's so confident it exists, but he's looking around the galaxy to find it. And he's so confident it's on this planet. And it's like, why? Like what leads you to believe it's here? Like it just doesn't make sense. And then you have the Klingons, who the Klingons are not happy about the Federation being in their space area. Surprise, surprise. And the Klingons basically have a showdown with the, um, the Federation. And the concept of the showdown that they have here, the way that the, the, the Enterprise interacts with the Klingons here, is fine. But it's just not fun. Fine, but not fun. But overall, I think the, the plot of the book is pretty weak. It's, it's just too short. And the other, the other issue that this book suffers from is that the characters are constantly doing things that I don't think the characters should have been doing. Like if 
if there's some authors that just get Star Trek and they just get how to write Star Trek characters, and then there's some authors that are there to write a book and they just, maybe they watched a few episodes and had some fun with it, but they're not true Trekkies. I just feel like Vardaman, he may have gotten all the terminology correct, but he just didn't nail the characters. And that's why I think that the book is not that great. And I think the ending, while a shocking ending, is like, oh, what? Oh, I, I, I guess. Like, it, it shocks you for a moment, and then you're like, oh, that's it? Like, it's not, it's not a shock that makes you happy that you read it in that way. So, next, my number two worst book is IQ by John Delancey and Peter David. John Delancey actually was the actor who played Q, um, who I have a lot of respect for. I know he's good friends with Dan Wells, um, on, uh, one of my favorite authors. And of course, he worked with Peter David on this book. And some of the concepts behind this book are cool. The idea that Q is basically going on this ridiculous journey that he drags Picard into um, is kind of interesting. Where I didn't like this book was it is very anti-religion. And there's a, several diatribes in the book just, just just going off about how bad religion is and specifically specific organized religions. The second issue I had with the book was it doesn't have action that is action that we want to see in a book. It it doesn't properly, I don't think it properly shows what the Q Continuum is. I think that there's another trilogy that does show the Q Continuum properly, but this really doesn't. And then also, uh, I feel like the way that they get the voices is not perfect. Obviously, Q, they actually did a really good job getting his voice, but when you have the other characters, Picard and Worf and Riker, I don't think that they really particularly nailed their their, their voices either. So, uh, I really just... This book just rubbed me the wrong way, the way it just happened, so that's why I didn't like it. But none of these books, absolutely none of these books, can hold a candle to how much I dislike the last book. And I did a book review on this book, and... I did not give it enough hate. And that is how much for just the planet. Oh, this book frustrated me. For one, it made promises it did not keep. It was not the proper level of satire. If you're going to satirize Star Trek, you have to nail the Star Trek elements. The problem is this book doesn't. Second of all, none of the characters, none of the characters felt like characters, particularly Spock and Kirk. Maybe McCoy felt a little bit McCoy-ish, but man, Kirk and Spock did not feel correct in this book. The other thing that really didn't work for this book was it was hard to track the action. It was just hard to follow. Um, uh, and uh, this book this book is probably the most whimsical of the books I've talked about, but that's because it's a satire. And the satirical elements, there are genuinely like funny moments in the book. And there was one sequence where they're breaking a character out of prison that I thought was quite comical. But on the whole... This author, like, the, it doesn't fit the mold of how Star Trek should be. The actors don't feel right. The settings don't feel right. The promises are not properly paid off in this book. And so just as a whole, it just doesn't work out. And so I really hated the process of reading this book. And I'm keeping it on my shelves because I'm a completionist and I want to have all the Star Trek books one day. But didn't did not like this one. So that is my ranking of what I think are the five worst Star Trek novels. Um, if you've read Star Trek novels, let me know what you, you would be on your list. And of course, my list is just my list, and your list is just your list. It's uh, totally understandable. If one of my favorites is on your uh, your list of worst books, that's totally fine. And also, if one of mine was one of the books that I read is actually one of your favorites, I, I apologize. It's just how I felt about it. Let me know all your thoughts and comments down below. And until next time, I'm Jonathan. And thank you for watching.